welcome to Info Hub. In our headlines, patrons brave rains to attend National Day of Village Celebration. Attorney General warns of zero tolerance for corruption. Department of Public Information signs MOU with Cuba's Pensa Latina and construction of a warm-up track slated for Lenora Track and Field Facility. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. And now for the details. The Regional Administration of Essequibo Islands West Demerara, in collaboration with the Ministry of Social Cohesion and with support from the Ministry of the Presidency, today hosted the National Day of Villages celebration at the Denamstel Community Center ground. Details from Stacey Carmichael. Diana, beautiful, happy and free. Diana. The National Day of Villages was celebrated on the theme working in harmony, building stronger relationships for a brighter future. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, who is currently performing the functions of the president, said the barter system within the villages formed the basis of the movement in Guyana for social cohesion. The villages show the ability of Guyanese people who were made slaves and indentured laborers that given an opportunity we could govern ourselves, we could develop ourselves, we could create an economy for ourselves. That is how the village market developed as a place in Guyana where we could trade, we could sell what we produce, and we can buy what we need. The Prime Minister also called on citizens to remain united and reject those forces in society who are trying to stir up division. Echoing similar sentiments, Minister of Social Cohesion, with responsibility for culture, youth and sport, Dr. George Norton called for an appreciation of our differences to the furtherance of national unity. Recognizing in the first place, then accepting and celebrating our differences are key to in achieving a unified Guyana. We are all one people. We are all one Guyanese. So I encourage every one of you to learn as you much as much as you can about each other and commit to working together to improve all our villages. Also highlighting the importance of social cohesion, Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan said it is critical to enabling the development of individuals and the nation. He noted that government has a plan to ensure the forging of national unity. National unity, which is indispensable to our prospects, for levering, leveraging our abundant natural endowment into the good life for all Guyanese remains elusive half a century after independence. We can ignore it, the absence of national unity, or we can pretend that it is not so, but it won't make it go away. The administration, however, is guilty of neither of these. It has a plan of how to confront this intractable issue. The activity saw cultural presentations showcasing the rich diversity of the Guyanese people in the form of songs, dances, skits and steel pan renditions. Ministers of government, officials, members of the diplomatic community and hundreds of citizens braved the heavy rains to be present at the activity. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. The government of Ghana says it has taken a very serious approach to the maintenance of law and order, especially in the area of corruption, and will in no way allow it to take residence in the country. Alexis Rodney tells us more. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Basil Williams has signaled the stern position embraced by the government against corruption in any form. He made the remarks this morning during the opening session of an anti-corruption sensitization seminar organized by the Ministry of Legal Affairs and the Regional Democratic Council of Region 4. The seminar was held at the Georgetown Club and targeted officials of the Mayor and the City Council, the RDC, and the Neighborhood and Community Development Councils. Billions of dollars have been and are being spent in this region, as well as millions being leaked, resulting in the stifling of the good life for the people of the region. The government takes seriously its international commitment under the conventions against corruption 
and it pledges to ensure that the state's assets redound to the benefit of the Guyanese people. According to the Attorney General, forensic audits conducted by the government have resulted in charges being laid against those who have stolen assets belonging to the state. It is against this backdrop that our government has provided a legislative framework in the fight against corruption. The State Assets Recovery Act of 2017, SARA as it's popularly called, has been passed to pursue civil, civil recovery of state assets. Government has also laid in Parliament the Protective Disclosure or Whistleblower Bill and the Witness Protection Bill which will be read for the first time during the next sitting of the National Assembly. The two bills are to enable fellow employees to feel free and safe to disclose corrupt dealings legally and to ensure the protection of the whistleblowers by the state. For InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. The relationship between Ghana and Cuba continues to strengthen with the signing of a historic MOU between the Ghana's Department of Public Information and Cuba's official state news agency, Pensa Latina. More from Gabriela Patra. The agreement will allow the dissemination of news from Latin America to the Caribbean region and vice versa. Guyana's ambassador to Cuba, His Excellency Halim Majid, noted that the process for this MOU began last year and has culminated with the signing of the agreement between the two entities. I'm delighted by this and I'm hoping that we can take the process forward. According to Editor-in-Chief of Prince Latina, Nestor Bandomo, the MOU will improve the functions and mandates of both agencies. I think it's very important for us to sign this agreement with government, Guyana's government to increase the, the relationship with information, a change of information between the two countries. Director of Communications and Editor Jorge Mendoza enthusiastically noted that all the hard work from both countries has begun to pay off. Yes, we think it's a step forward, as our president has said, because uh, there shouldn't be a, a zone of silence in the Caribbean region about Latin America and there shouldn't be that silence in Latin America about the Caribbean region. The Director of Public Information, Imran Khan, pointed out that the MOU will allow Guyana to have access to non-English parts of the hemisphere. This is a very exciting moment. It's historic, but it's also very exciting for information flow in the information age. It represents an advancement uh, through cooperation and through mutual understanding and interests. The signing of the MOU took place during the International Trade Fair of Havana 2017, FIHAF, in Cuba. Gabriela Patram for InfoHub. InfoHub Zanil Williams is at Mainstay, where at a four-day regional health officers conference, it was announced that 20 scholarships will be awarded to community health workers in 2018. Here's that report. This announcement was made yesterday by Minister within the Ministry of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummings, at the opening of a four-day conference for regional health officers at the Lake Mainstay Resort. This scholarship program will ensure that community-level workers have a stable career path and have a broader view of how to manage the region's health system. You, the officers, we are expecting you to play a pivotal role in our delivery of, of health care. And so we want to build the capacity. We want to ensure that the gaps are filled, uh, our human resources, as the PS spoke about. And we want to ensure that you have a career path. And for you to be a full-fledged um, RHO, you have to do a master's, at least a master's. Those who are not doing their master's, we, all of you will be given, uh, you're your first priority of getting those scholarships to do master's. The training for the scholarship program will be funded by the World Bank in collaboration with Tulane University. The four-day conference will see health updates from across Guyana and various issues will be discussed such as the procurement of drugs and the budgeting for regional health development. Dr. K. Sheko, the Regional Health Services Director, says that efficient training and services have to be put in place for the Regional Health Service to develop. The role of RHS is to ensure that there is adequate and appropriate health care across the 10 administrative regions well, I was just corrected just now, it should be developmental regions, the 10 developmental regions. And when we examined the scope of regional health services, we would have discovered that we have to put many systems in place 
before our health services can function efficiently to execute the delivery of care that is required. The Minister of Public Health has been working assiduously to strengthen primary health care systems, which is the pillar of any system. Zanil Williams reporting from Lake Mainstay for Info Hub. The government of Ghana, in collaboration with the Caribbean Development Bank, today launched the Ghana Skills Development and Employability Project at the Pegasus Hotel. Details from Crystal Stoll. The project aims to improve the capacity to deliver technical vocational, educational and training programs across the secondary education sectors in Guyana. Chief Education Officer Marcel Hudson in his remarks explained that the TVET program is considered one of the driving engines of all economies and as a result the Ministry of Education seeks to build capacity in such an area. This project is seen as a pilot exercise initially that will eventually see all the students across secondary, the secondary sector access skills training for the world of work or continuous lifelong education. This project will place Guyana's secondary sector on parity with its counterparts in the Caribbean. Hudson noted that while training is currently offered at practical instruction departments and practical instruction centers, disparities exist within the institutional arrangements and the TVET project seeks to address those gaps. Portfolio Manager, Social Sector Division of CDB, Dr. Idame Pandey, expressed appreciation to the government for collaborating on the project and commended the government for the inclusion of the hinterland regions. Among many activities, there will be enhancement of the learning environment at seven secondary level facilities, including a number in hinterland communities. The inclusion of the hinterland communities speaks to the commitment of the government of Guyana to ensuring that there is equitable provision of education services across this country. The main objective of the project is to increase the number of secondary school graduates who are equipped with the necessary appropriate skills to be marketable for the world of work. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. Gabriella joins us once again to tell us that another batch of participants graduated on Tuesday evening from the Information Communication Technology Workshop, spearheaded by First Lady Sandra Granger. The graduation, which is accredited by the Board of Industrial Training, BIT, held its ceremony at Echoes Youth Skills and Information Technology, IT. The center saw 33 successful participants receiving their certificates. In commending the participants for the completion of the eight-week program, the First Lady expressed hope that the skills provided will serve to benefit them as they enter into the world of work. I have to applaud and commend you for your discipline and your dedication in staying the course and learning because one thing I have discovered and I tell people, our children and young people want to learn and they want to work. Because when that opportunity comes, they seize it and they go with it. The First Lady said though the initiative was launched through her office, the Ministry of Social Protection must be commended for their continuing support in the development of the nation's youths. Donald Ainsworth, Vice Chairperson, BIT, said that the program is testimony to the necessity of providing young adults with the necessary skills to make them marketable. I would like you to see yourselves as an integral part of the global economy because the world has become but a village and we have we interact and we relate in real time and therefore it is important that we expand our knowledge in information communication technology so that they can be relevant and be a part of the, the world's progress. The program provides young adults with a training in the areas of information communication technology, literacy and numeracy, entrepreneurship, sexual reproductive health, science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM subjects, micromanagement development and soft skills. Similar workshops are slated to be implemented throughout the country. Gabriella Patram for InfoHub. And in our final report, athletes will soon benefit from a warm-up track to be constructed at the Leonora Track and Field Facility. A $14 million warm-up track is slated for construction at the Leonora Track and Field Facility. This was disclosed by Director of the Facility, Trevor Williams. Under our new management structure, we have undertaken to budget for. Um, it's now out to tender. It will be opened on the 14th of, of November and awarded subsequently to the winner. 
it will be at 200 meters on the southwestern curve. It more than likely will be a two-phase project where in the first instance it will be grass laid and covered and then move on to the concrete and synthetic. Williams explained the importance of having a warm-up track at the facility. It is a requirement really for holding international meet and having at least meet of a certain standard and caliber. It's a critical resource um, mandated by the IAF to have a designated place for athletes to train and warm up. Additionally, Williams disclosed that in the near future, the facility will undergo several upgrades, including the construction of an Olympic-sized swimming pool, a gym, and a dorm for athletes. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.